We're going to be looking at import-export prices for the month of July hitting the wires. Import prices month over month have a drop of minus 1.4%, down 1.4%. This is huge, and it does underscore that there are some benefits of a stronger dollar. Take petroleum out, it gets cut in half to minus seven-tenths of 1%. This is really crazy, because at the beginning of the year, we were up 1.5 in this series. That was the highest ever since record-keeping in 89. Stunning reversals, whether it's inventories or a strong dollar. Now let's look at year-over-year import prices up 8.8%, less than a 9.5 expected. And in the rearview mirror, we had 10.7. So definitely moving a bit down from there. Let's look at import prices year over year. That was 8.8. Now export prices month over month down 3.3%, down 3.3%. Once again, if you look at March, it was up 3.9, the highest since 89, another stunning reversal. And finally, export prices year over year up 13.1%. The high water mark there was 18.7%, uh, and that was in May, and that does underscore the big drops we are seeing. Now, whether uh, the Fed is going to acknowledge some of what certainly looks like peak prices in the rearview mirror or not, I can't tell you, but the market continues, continues to move in that direction, even with some of the bumps in the road in equities yesterday and the notion we are coming off three-week high-yield closes, whether it's in 10s and 30s here, boons or gilts overseas. But in the end, we continue to see a lot of inventory reduction going on and definitely some counter-cyclical trends that we are now seeing with respect to pricing. Melissa Lee, back to you. Rick Santelli, thank you. Futures not really reacting too much to import-export uh, price data. Uh, we're seeing the S&P up by 21 right now, pre-market. NASDAQ looking to open up 74. Steve, Rick had mentioned the difference of where import prices were at the beginning of the year versus now. The dollar, of course, since then, the Dixie is up 10 percent. So that's a, a huge factor in all that. What's your take on the data? Yeah, you know, I think that uh, in, in the family of, uh, uh, of, of inflation data, the import-export price data, sort of the, the forgotten stepchild here, and, and it's an important one because we've talked all this week, um, we've seen the uh, better-than-expected uh, consumer uh, inflation data and producer number, producer data. We talked about factors that will continue to uh, elevate inflation, uh, uh, wage gains coming down the road, uh, the supply chain not completely um, uh, uh, cleared. But this is one factor that is going to, down the road, continue to reduce inflation. And the reason is this. It takes time for goods prices to adjust to the change in the currency. And we've had this very strong dollar over time. We're seeing just the beginning of it. I think there's two factors playing out in this data today. The first factor is the stronger dollar, which uh, is across the board on our, um, from our, our, our trading partners, uh, but also the idea that uh, China has opened up. So there should be this flood of goods that can be coming that should reduce prices. Also, I think some uh, change in shipping costs could show up in this data as well. Um, so, so this is something that's going to help down the road as contracts be come to reflect the change in the currency. Some of it's immediate. Some of it takes time. And uh, Rick said this is the last piece. There's one more piece of inflation data we're going to be watching. No, it's not the sentiment number. I don't think the Fed really cares much. Are people uh, happy, angry, sad, or whatever? I think they care what inflation expectations are. And at 10 o'clock, we'll get those University of Michigan uh, inflation data. Uh, and and I, it's worth looking back earlier this week, Monday, we got the New York Fed inflation data, and it showed an across-the-board decline in expectations for inflation. They're still too high when it comes to the near term, but uh, when it comes to the three-year and the five-year outlook, all of that is... Um, is trending downward. And I think the Fed's going to be watching that. Are we at peak inflation? That's what the Fed's going to be asking itself. But I think it's going to wait until September to see if we have a trend going here, uh, not just one month's worth of Balance data uh, upon which again. to make policy.